Hey peeps, I am going to uh, do a quick tutorial on how to make a map of a city uh, for laser cutting. Uh, I imagine you'd want to use it for laser cutting, but maybe you have more creative uh, purposes for it. Uh, the tool I'm going to be using is this awesome website, lasermapmaker.com. I am already logged in. Uh, the city I'm going to make a map of today is uh, going to be Minneapolis, Minnesota. It's a city I am familiar with. So I'm just going to go up to the search gear, type in Minneapolis, and zoom all the way over to Minneapolis. If I wanted to, I could zoom out, try to find my city, or just find an interesting piece of earth to uh, go after. But in this particular situation, um, I know Minneapolis is my destination, and uh, this is roughly what I'm looking for. Uh, one of the first things I'm going to do is change the color of some of these layers. I don't like everything being red. My brain doesn't quite work that way. So switch the water over to blue. Um, there's a lot of these features that I don't need, so I'm going to just start turning some of these things off. Um, country boundaries, in my situation, I don't need any of this. If you start unclicking things and seeing things uh, disappearing, things that you want, maybe you want to put that back in. In my situation, I don't want any of this. Um, I don't think I need any of these things either, so I'm just going to pull those out. I'm not really seeing anything noticeable that I'm going to um, remove. Uh, one thing I want to be clear about too that I forgot to mention, uh, Laser Map Maker has various styles. The one I'm going to be using today is cut lines. Uh, that is certainly, uh, in my experience, the most efficient for laser cutting. So here we are. Um, zooming in and zooming out will give you different levels of detail. Like if I zoom in here, I see all these, I don't know if these are parking lots or alleyways or stuff. I don't need that detail in my map. I don't want it in the map. Um, this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm still not wild about this red, so I'm going to go through and start changing some of these colors. This is going to take a moment. Um, maybe someday we'll have different colors, but for now, this is what we've got. It doesn't take too long to do this. Um, and as you can see, things are starting to uh, change to the colors that I'm doing. I like to do all of these pretty much the same color. Um, just because it's going to make it more efficient when I pull everything into light burn. Now, I am already noticing that there's some of these little red squiggles. I don't know if I want those in my map, so I might just kind of figure out what that those layers are. In fact, it's this layer right here, this uh, major link. I don't know if I'm going to want those in my map or not. Um, I think the map will look just fine without them, probably. Um, Yeah, I have to think about that. But I'm, so I'm going to leave that red for the moment while I uh, brain on that. Um, so I'm going to continue going through here, uh, changing these other layers to color that I find more uh, palatable to, uh, in fact, road construction and road polygon. I don't think I need any of that. Um, one thing that is a really important feature or setting to work with here is you notice there's this you know, it says width. And the width is the width of the lines here. Um, we have kind of our major ro roadways here. You know what, I think I am going to just, uh, yeah, maybe just this roadway link. I don't think I want them in there. I think they just add noise. Although over here it kind of, you know, screw it, fine. I'll put them in, be that way. Um, Switch those over to black. But what I was saying before is these, um, this width here. This affects the width of the line. I'm not sure if you noticed, but these lines got thinner when I did that. I'm going to increase the thickness of these lines because I do want these roads to be, these major through thoroughfares to be a bit more prominent. Uh, so I am going to increase the line thickness. Another thing that I'm going to be doing is that since I'm not engraving this map, I'm actually going to be cutting these out. Uh, this, I think it's the, uh, the street low. Yeah, that's it. I'm going to reset this to its minimum thickness. 
and I'm going to increase it by two. And the reason for that is, in fact, that maybe that looks a little bit much. Yeah, that maybe looks a little better. Um, the reason for that is, is when I'm cutting out all of these blocks, so that's what's going to happen here. I'm going to cut out these outlines. So all these white spaces are going to get cut out. Um, if I leave this too thin, and I want, yeah, that's the one. If I leave this too thin, like this, when the laser goes through here, it's going to probably disintegrate all these lines. Uh, this is probably fine for engraving, but since I want to do um, cuts, I am going to increase that a bit so that I have some wood between, you know, some wood still sitting there, structure between these um, lines so, so that uh, this doesn't just get burnt up. Um, one thing that's kind of an interesting way of when you're working with laser map maker what you see on the screen is not necessarily what you're going to get every time click on this little print button and it will allow you to have a display um ratio here 1.12145 in this situation i want to do a square so i'm going to do that um, i can move this around and i can zoom this in however i want to i can zoom in zoom out but I think kind of there, kind of want the city-ish there. I've got some rivers and all this other stuff. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to use the little lock here. This prevents me from accidentally moving this around. Um, in this particular situation, I have roads that are crossing rivers. In my, in my map, I want to have a base layer that is probably going to be the river, so I'll probably spray paint that blue. This white layer will be the next layer, and then this these black lines are going to be the third layer with all the cutouts. In this situation, the most efficient way to do this is to do two different exports. I'm going to disable the water here, and I'll explain that in a little bit, but I'm going to do my first export as just the roads. So click here. This is important, PNG, SVG, traced SVG. It's more important if you're gonna be actually cutting things. This traced SVG is pretty freaking amazing. I wanna make sure, yeah, I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna generate this traced SVG here and uh, we'll see what happens. It usually takes, I don't know, 30 seconds, maybe a little bit more than that, maybe a little bit less, but this is really what separates Laser Map Maker from a lot of the other tools. I don't know of any others. I guess I know of one, but I don't know of any others that are easy to use that will actually export an SVG, a vector that you don't have to bring into another program to trace. So I'm going to go ahead and just save that. We'll just say um, Minneapolis Roads, and we'll just leave it that way. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the water and I am going to disable all of these other layers. Take a look at this. Since I haven't moved anything, this is what I'm going to be getting. That's good. So again, traced SVG. I'm going to generate this, export it. This may go a little bit faster because there's less um, data for it to trace, but uh, maybe I'm just talking out of my butt because I'm a big dum dum head. Um, that being said, I'm going to be a big dum dum head with a pretty cool map here shortly. Okay, so I'm just going to say cool. Minneapolis water. And we are good with that. All right, so now I'm in Lightburn. I'm just going to grab this water vectorized map, bring it in here. It has this nice border here, which is cool. Um, it's got my color. This I want to set to line. Um, if you're not familiar with Lightburn, this isn't really a Lightburn tutorial video, but um, I'll show you a little bit. So what I did was I just dragged this in here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bring in my roads. Much more complex layer, of course. Um, 
20 inches by 20 inches is a bit larger than I want. Um, make sure this is grouped. Make sure that's grouped. Yeah, this is all good. I'm going to select everything. I'm going to center it. And I'm going to resize this. I want this to be 12 inches by 12 inches. Lightburn has done that for me. I'll zoom in here in a second to kind of show you what we're dealing with. And this is making my system a little chunky. It's a fairly uh, intense um, <laughs> SVG file here. Um, but with that being said, you can see now it's going to go through and cut out all these city blocks. So what we're having, you know, what if I set this to fill? Okay, so the black areas are actually what's going to be cut out. The white area is what's going to be a left back. Um, just to give you a better understanding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I have a, my laser, these are settings for my laser. I don't know what works for you, but for me, uh, I'm going to do a line. Um, my speed is 35, 40 power. And what I'm going to do here, select my uh, water layer, move that over. Take my um, land layer here and just align this. The reason why I'm doing it this way, oops, I probably should have uh, moved this over with the water, so I'll just move that over there. I'll go ahead and. Okay, so that moved over. Again, your laser is going to be different than my laser. Um, my laser doing a 12 by 24 um, really is not. Uh, an issue. So I'll do a quick preview for uh, just to give an idea of how long this is expected to take. This is never actually accurate. This says 51 minutes. Realistically, on my system at my speeds, um, we're probably looking at something a little bit closer to hour and a half ish. Uh, that being said, that's really all you need to do. I mean, you can go from what's my city to here's my output to vector files that you can bring right into Lightburn or your other favorite program and get going with this output. I mean, I don't think this was more than, you know, I'll have to check the video time, but I think we're talking, what, maybe 10, 15 minutes at most to go from an idea of wanting to export a map to having a map exported, ready to burn, um, it's pretty freaking cool. I mean, there are, I don't know of any other tool that makes it this easy. It's, uh, it, it's awesome. And Laser Map Maker just keeps getting better. Um, so I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to throw some at me. Um, I'd be happy to help in any way I can. Okay, so this is the finished product. Uh, as you can see, I cut out the uh, top two layers of this uh, I like having all the city blocks and all the features there uh, in more of a 3d and the roads and everything that just uh, to me that is is appealing uh, this really I mean this is the top layer here and this is why I was uh, you know kind of going um, preaching about the line thickness because if these were much thinner uh, they would have disintegrated that's why I uh, adjusted that um, here we just have bottom layer of wood, <laughs> um, blue, uh, this, I haven't glued or anything of this either or have it. I'm just super strong. I just pulled everything off, but no, really, um, you have that, have my, you know, that was the, this is the first layer that I exported that water layer, or that's the second layer I exported my fault. Um, and here's the other layer. I mean, this was 10 minutes, maybe just a little bit more, and I was doing a tutorial video. You could do this in 10 minutes with Laser Map Maker. Um, it was just over an hour on my laser to uh, get all this stuff cut out. Um, but holy crap, I mean, what more is there to say? You know, the results speak for themselves. Uh, you could do this with any place, you know, not just U.S. I mean, pretty much anywhere in the world. Um, and quickly, 10 minutes. I mean, just laser map maker. 
Wow.